Afternoon all, hope you're well. Well, I'm now going to show you how to cook heron rolls in the traditional method. I'll just put the heron in the sink, I'll scale them all and just let them drain. Well, the next thing to do is gut them and take the rolls out. Ever so easily done. Put the heron on the board, stick the knife in the vent. You only want the tip, because you don't want to split the rows. The only tough bit is getting through them fins, they're a little bit tough. And just run the knife up. Open up the fish. And delicately take the rows out, you don't want to split them. This is a male fish. You can see it's got the soft creamy rows in it. And I'll just lay them on the board. What I'll do is I'll cut the head off too, because I'm going to be cooking these later. And cut the tail off. The same as you do when you're cooking a heron. Just run the knife up the bloodline a couple of times. Then stick it back in the sink. And I'll discard the guts. Next one, do the same thing, just use the tip of the knife, you don't want to pierce the rope. And this fish is female, as you can see, they're bally eggs. Obviously, you can see the difference, that's the female row with the eggs, and that's the male row. I'll be frying these herring in a little while. So I'll just, while I'm there, just run the knife up the bloodline and clean them out as well. Ever so easy, quick and simple. Well, once you split all the heron and got all the row out, just get the row, mixture of the soft row and the hard row, and put them in a bowl. Onto in a bowl. Just turn on the tap and fill it with a bit of water. It's got to be quite delicate because you don't want to burst them. Once it's full of water, just give them a swirl around to rinse off all the blood and the other bits and pieces. and then you can drain them out. Give it another minute or two and let them drain a little bit more then rinse it out again. I like to do that because I get rid of all the blood and bits of gut and other bits and pieces off them. So yeah, nice and clean. Once they're drained, they're also because they're still a bit moist. I'm now going to dip them in flour before I fry them. The moisture, obviously let the flour stick better and you get a little bit thinner coating on them and they fry better. I've got to say, I do love hot heron roll. It is a favorite of mine. That's one of the perks of getting the autumn heron. Obviously, we'll, I think I prefer the soft roll to the hard roll, but I do like them both. I always remember a friend when he was at school, he found out I ate heron roe. And we all we all know what the eggs are and we all know what the soft row is. And he had great delight in telling all the other kids at school what I eat. <laughs> Rotten bugger. But it did tickle him. He bloody loved it. I thought it was ever so amusing telling everyone that I eat fish uh, man stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. While I was 
prepping the, getting the rose out. I gutted the heron, scaled them, took the bloodline out and also notched the sides ready for frying. So uh, everything's done. You might as well get everything done in one go and that's done and dusted then. One little trick, put all the guts and the heads and the tails and all the bits and pieces you don't want in a plastic bag. Don't put it in your bin in your house because that will stink to high heaven. I'll just put it in the bag, what the heron come in. And then just pick up the bag and chuck it straight in the bin outside. Because if not, that will stink your bin out after a day or two. What you don't want in your house. Then all you have to do, just get some plain flour. Put a little bit of pepper. And a bit of salt. Give it a stir with your finger in a professional manner. <laughs> and then you get the rose. Just get your rose, roll them in the flour, and then we just chuck them all in at once and just turn them over. Push them to the side. Easy peasy. Anyone can do it. Just sorry, coat in flour. Come on, Murphy's walking, just thinking about him. Probably better if I had a bigger plate, but there you go. That is what it is. The months are all coated in flour. Just get a frying pan. Put a good glug of oil in it and let it warm up. Let the pan warm up to temperature. And all you have to do is just lay them in. You don't want it too hot, she'll cremate them. I just sizzle them a little bit when I first put them in. Just spread them about. my boat bit just to rearrange them but that's about that one thing don't forget is put the extractor fan on just leave them on a low heat for about 10 minutes they should be all crispy as hell on one side and all you've got to do is then flip them over just cook them low until they virtually look cooked all the way through you can see now they all look virtually cooked now, don't they? Once they look cooked on top, you know they're crispy underneath. So all you got to do, get the old fish slice and flip them over. Just spread out properly. And there they are. Look at them smashing, don't they? Just so they should be, nice and crispy. I'm sure all the posh chefs would say, I'm cooking the hell out of them. They shouldn't be that crisp. They shouldn't be cooked that long and blah de blah de blah. But this is the traditional way of eating them. How they should be. All this stuff was, all this traditional stuff is cooked how it should be cooked, not 
for three minutes like some posh chef's site should. They only need three or four minutes on the other side. That's just to crisp them up a bit because they're virtually cooked all the way through when we had them on the original side. So they're virtually done right now. How I like them is served up on a bit of toast. Just how it should be. Don't they look cracking? Only one more thing to do. Let's give it a liberal dose of malt vinegar. Help cut through the fat, smashing. What a self-respecting person wouldn't want to eat a plate of heron rolls on toast. Bloody lovely. Wayne, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.